Hey guys, welcome to The Strong Young Man. In the world of social media, we are the center of our own world. Most of us don't give a second thought to what we post or what we say in our social circles or at work. Our words can have cascading implications, can stir up resentments or make us look foolish. Most often, what we say is the cause of our troubles, whether we believe it or not. In the world of social media, this is becoming increasingly important. Be very careful about what you put online. Today, I'm going to explain how and why being selective with your words, speaking more quality but less quantity is something seriously worth considering. Firstly, the more you say, the more likely you are to say something foolish. We have two ears and one mouth for a reason. That is to say, you should spend more time listening and less time talking. He who knows does not speak, and he who speaks does not know. Lao Tsa. Monks are the paradigm of this sentiment not speaking unless absolutely necessary. No doubt, the most foolish people you know are the ones with the loudest mouth. Eventually, they will say something foolish. It is only a matter of time. In general, when dealing with delicate situations, you should always say less than necessary. When someone is forcing you to commit to something, the less information you give, the less likely you are to lock yourself into something undesirable. It's much more effective to be vague and political in your answers. Politicians do this all the time. We laugh at them for it, but it really is a powerful tool that they use when the media is trying to bully them into an answer. Try to use this tool if you can. Secondly, there are all kinds of people in this world with resentments that you could stir up at any moment. You could trigger this resentment at any time by something you said, no matter how innocent the intention. People are not as forgiving as you might think, and you can generate resentment easily by saying the wrong thing, even if you meant nice. Some people have a long memory and will not easily forget what you have said. The less you say, the less chance you have of touching on someone's vulnerabilities and triggering a response. Everybody has vulnerabilities. This could be anything from a weakness to an insecurity or a secret. By listening rather than speaking, you can work out what it is which can give you clues to the darker aspects of their psychology, which can be useful to avoid triggering a response down the track. Another reason to listen more than you talk is that you can't learn anything new by talking all the time. If you spend more time listening, you will be able to learn more about life and the people around you. You could learn anything from anyone at any time, as long as you are open to listening and learning something new. Only engage in teaching people new things when they are ready to listen to you. People will learn when they are ready to learn, not when we are ready to teach. It is good to teach people things, but this must be practiced with caution. By trying to teach people things that they don't know, you come across as arrogant or superior. No matter how much expertise you have on a topic or how sound the advice, you imply that you know more than they do. To the extent that this strikes at their insecurities, your wise words could cause a fierce resistance, the opposite of your intentions. People with a large ego who think they know everything will become extremely offended, even if they don't show it. The best way to teach people is to demonstrate your knowledge, as this doesn't strike at their insecurities. If people are eager to learn, then by all means teach them. You will discover the best way to deliver lessons that make people feel secure over time and with practice. Younger people are more open to learning new things without feeling inferior. This might be because they are fresh out of school and have been conditioned this way. Or it could be because they have spent less time operating under one method and are more open to new things. As we get older, we tend to develop more rigidity and become less flexible in our learning. The same goes for giving people advice. When you give people advice, you may evoke a response, especially if it's about something important. Sometimes the advice that you're trying to convey is too difficult for them to understand, or simply that they don't want to hear it or aren't ready to hear it. Again, people may think you're coming from a morally or intellectually superior standpoint. Understand that sometimes people will ask for your advice when all they really want is for someone to confirm their beliefs, thoughts, and opinions. They just want to hear their own understanding coming out of your mouth. If you care enough about this person, you should tell them what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. If someone really values your opinion, then they will ask for it and they will listen intently. If you are going to volunteer your own advice, do so sparingly and do your best to try and come across as intellectually inferior as you can. An example of this is to concede that you have made this mistake before or talk about your own inadequacies on another topic to appease their ego. Another situation in which you should think before you speak is when you are trying to explain yourself. 
Try not to waste your time explaining yourself to those who you don't owe an explanation. Those who believe you don't need an explanation, and those who need an explanation won't believe you. Rather than explain yourself, let your actions do the talking. Consider demonstrating what you would otherwise say rather than explaining it. The demonstration of actions is factual. It's not argument. It can't be disputed. Getting others to agree with your position through actions rather than words is a mark of high influence. By explaining yourself, you open up more chances to upset or offend someone with your vigorous defence. Also understand that no is a full sentence. You are permitted to say no without an addendum. Most of the time, you are not under any obligation to explain your reasoning behind the word no. Don't let people bully you into explaining yourself in this instance. Silence is a great strategy to deploy after saying no. Taken to the extreme, this can be even more powerful. Being completely silent can make people extremely uncomfortable, especially in a fierce negotiation when you are asserting yourself. You can make the other person squirm by being silent and giving short answers. This can benefit you in two ways. Firstly, you don't say anything foolish. And secondly, the other person will stumble to fill the awkward silence left in the vacuum of words that you've created. And this makes them more likely to say something foolish. Joaquin Phoenix demonstrates this perfectly on the David Letterman show approximately 10 years ago. The usually eloquent Letterman was fumbling with his words for something to say, and he was made to feel extremely uncomfortable on his own show. I'll put the link to that clip in the description. Another situation in which silence is golden, if you are the subject of a police investigation. Do not say anything, even if you are innocent. Police have been known to bully citizens into a false conviction. They employ manipulation techniques to ascertain as much information as they can out of you in order to lay a false conviction. Some police officers are so corrupt that they would intentionally lie to create legal trouble for you, and you have no way of identifying these officers from the good ones. You have the right to remain silent, but you also have the right to remain innocent. Any information you have should be withheld to prevent it being used against you. The more you speak, the more likely you are to confess to the violation or any violation in general. In this instance, the only thing you should say is that you want a lawyer. Also, never offer full disclosure to a woman. You cannot appeal to a woman's reason or sentiment to genuinely forgive a deficit in a man's performance. Women do not need to hear your full life story to qualify you for sex. In fact, keeping women in the dark about various details of your life will allow her to dream up information, which will always work in your favour. It will also give her a biochemical rush. Do not make the mistake of thinking that a woman needs to hear your whole life story. Understand that women are not able to process masculine problems in the same way that men do. The less you say, the more powerful her urge to ascertain more details, and this will increase the power you have over her. By keeping some mystery, you make a woman more determined to stay in your frame. Nothing is more self-satisfying for a woman to think that she has figured a man out based on her own mythical feminine intuition. When a man overtly confirms his character, story, and his value, the mystery is dispelled and the biochemical rush she felt from the unknown evaporates. Similarly, the less chance you have of saying something that disqualifies you from sex with her. The epitome of this is that you should never reveal the number of sexual partners you have had before her. Don't get involved with gossip. Nothing good can come from this. The tongue has power over life and death. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21. Nobody likes a gossip queen or king, so don't be that person. It's better to let someone else take that role and have them feel the fury of everyone they offend by talking about people. These people can be good to have close by as a spy gathering information for you about other people. They can be an extremely valuable source of information. Just keep them at arm's length to make sure that you do not get sucked into their chaos that they inevitably draw upon themselves. People who can't control what they say or when they talk are generally out of control of their impulses. There is a passage from the book of James chapter 3 verses 3 to 6 that sums up perfectly how powerful and destructive the human tongue can be. It reads, When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire. People who control their tongue control themselves. 
You must learn to control your impulses and resist the urge to speak when you shouldn't. This may take practice. It's not always wise to be silent, but you must be careful with your words and choose when to speak appropriately. This way, people will increasingly value everything that you say because of the scarcity and the importance of everything that comes out of your mouth. Final thought from Leonardo da Vinci. Oysters open completely when the moon is full. And when the crab sees one, it throws a piece of stone or seaweed into it and the oyster cannot close again so that it serves the crab for meat. Such is the fate of him who opens his mouth too much and thereby puts himself at the mercy of the listener. Thanks for watching today's episode. In episode 14, I'll go through why single men are more productive. Subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when it drops. Catch you then.